Hey guys, welcome back to Build Something Cool. My name is Dale. Today we are going to build a new arbor for this high speed quill. This quill goes on to my KLE tool cutter grinder. Now, if you don't know what a tool cutter grinder is, think of it this way. Think of it as a Swiss army knife of grinders. It can sharpen just about everything. Plus it can do outside grinding and also interior grinding. And that's what this new arbor is for. It's gonna be set up so I can do some interior grinding. But before we get into this build, let's talk about, have you picked up your mug yet? This is not just a mug. Think of it as a inspirational tool. You know when you're having your cup of coffee in the morning and you think, what should you do out in the shop? Just look at the mug, go out there and build something cool. Before we can get into this, let's talk about what we've got here. So originally the spindle that's in here and they're interchangeable. And like I said, this is a high speed quill. The other one I have is a heavy duty quill. And the difference between the two quills is the way the bearings are configured. This one here has two bearings. The heavy duty one actually has four. And they're a very accurate, high quality bearing. I can show you right now what makes the big difference between a good bearing and a bad bearing is watch this. This, because of this notch right here, this is the lightest part and no matter what happens, that always shows up to the top. On this arbor that we wanna make, we've got some choices we have to do. We have to decide what type of material. We're gonna actually use O1 tool steel. The reason I'm using O1 tool steel is because I was at a uh, scrap yard. They had a bunch of this O1 tool steel at a dollar a pound, so I bought it all. It cost me $300. That's one reason we're using the O1 tool steel. I can harden this up to a 65 Rockwell. I can also bring it back and temper it and make it a little bit tougher. We also wanna to use tool steel on this because we don't want this to bend. If it bends and it's running at 20,000 RPMs, well, you can imagine it's quite a uh, experience to go through. So let's get to producing this part. Every good project starts out with cutting your material to size. Uh, O1 steel is different. I've never worked with it to really speak of, especially in this capacity. I've never really put it on the lathe and studied it like I have on this. And I say I learned a lot. So we're gonna put the shaft in. We're gonna clean up the end first. Now, also in building a part like this, it's really important to get everything in the right order. And I'm gonna show you how I kind of messed up on that. But I do want you to see everything that I'm doing in this video. I want you to see all the successes and the mistakes. So we're gonna clean up the end first. So we're gonna use a center drill. I put this together a while back. You guys should make one of these for your lathes because you're going to use it every time you have to drill a hole. So here we are actually talking about doing things in the right order. So we need to drill this out. We're going to drill it undersized. We need a final size is going to be a quarter inch. And you're going to see what I made. My mistake on this was I drilled it out and I forgot to ream it to a quarter inch. So later on in the video, you'll see that that's when I actually reamed it out. Here I'm taking the chuck off. Now this lathe has what's called an L spindle. And the L stands for long nose. I gotta say guys, I don't like the spindle at all. I'm used to a D3 or a D6 uh, spindle. They're a lot easier to work with. They don't have to be tightened down like these do. You have to have a big wrench on these. You have to hit them with a hammer, which of course, well, at least I do like hitting things with a hammer. So now we're gonna reset the shaft up on the four jaw. We're measuring it for the shoulder. And now we're just taking a cut. Now, like I said, I am trying to learn how to work with this O1 tool steel. It cuts completely different than anything else I've ever worked with. In some ways it has a gumminess to it. Also, you see that little burn, that little dark spot? That's actually from the oil because this stuff gets incredibly hot. See, every time I dab oil, you see another streak of oil that's burnt. And you can see there's a, a burr left over after cutting, putting a little radius in the corner there, doing a little file work, a little bit of sanding, just cleaning it up, making it look pretty. Now we go in with the ream. 
At least I figured out to do the ream at this point. Luckily it worked out fairly well. Now we need to turn the part around. So I want to give a shout out to our sponsor WD-40 for sending me over their WD-40 Specialist Industrial Strength Cleaner and Degreaser. So you know when we're using cutting oil on a part like this and we have to get it cleaned up, I used to use paint thinner. Well, the problem with paint thinner is one, it smells, another one, it's flammable, and there's always a residue left over. This stuff solves a problem. I don't have an odor. I also don't have residue left over. I gotta say, it has been really great to use, especially on cleanup parts on the lathe and also the milling machine. When I turn the end of the shaft down, well, I made it too small for the four jaw chuck. So I'm gonna use a collet block, and we're gonna protect this collet block with these uh, copper jaw protectors. But these protectors were actually designed to be used differently than the way I'm setting them up. They were actually used for an external. If you saw my video on grinding in a six jaw chuck, you'll know that these were used in that. Here, they're actually not working very well. Very frustrating. Um, I do have the sound down for a certain reason, which I'm sure some of you can understand this is a family channel. Well, eventually, I got it clamped in. But as I kept working it, I really could not get it centered up. And because I was not using the full length of the jaws, there was just, I could just couldn't get that to work. Just could not get it centered up, no matter what I did. I was gonna try to turn on it, and I just went, this is a bad idea. I took it out of the chuck. And I'm taping up copper strips. Actually, these are brass strips. I'm putting them right on. This is the right solution because now I'm going to get full clamping pressure down the whole length of the jaws. And this is going to work out really, really well. We're going to face the end off, get it prepped. Now this is the end that we're going to have to thread and also put a taper on it. Right here, I'm experimenting with trying to figure out how to cut. Right now, we're cutting the taper, and I'm just doing it with the compound. And the taper was simply set up by just taking the original shaft, putting it in the lathe, and just measuring it with a dial indicator on it to get the angle set up on the compound rest. Now we're going to cut the threads. And this is a very interesting tool that I want to show you. See this gooseneck? This is really an interesting tool for using when cutting threads. It's a form tool. And you end up putting a lot of pressure on this. You can get a lot of vibration. Well, what happens here is they come around to the part and they dig into the top. Well, when you have a spring-loaded part here, like this gooseneck, what happens is it folds the cutter away so it absorbs all the pressure. So this makes for a lot easier way to cut threads. This is the first time I ever used it. I gotta say, boy, it was really, really nice. This is a total cheat what I'm doing here, but it's a lot faster to just cut the thread, not all the way. The die comes on square and straight so you don't have any binding later. We're gonna just cut out the center of this so we're just sitting on the toe and the heel of this taper. In the middle, you can get some problems here, so I just wanted to cut that out and made it. Coming in with the file. What you see there, those are these grinding stones here. Now, they haven't been flattened, so they're not precision ground. And there's a time when you use a precision ground stone, there's times you don't. When you use a precision ground stone, and I gotta do a video on that, you really knock off all the high spots and you make the stone level by going on the surface grinder with a diamond wheel. But also what happens is you lose those high spots, and those high spots are actually where you're getting a lot of your cutting from. So these have not been ground flat for a reason. That is so they can cut in better here. Then if I need to, I can polish them out later. Now here we're gonna try the arbor.
We're going to double check it. We're going to mark the shaft. Put the quill back on. See how it looks? Nice. There's worn ink all the way around that, so it's perfect. Now it's time to cut the flats on it. This is for the wrench. I got to say, I totally screwed this one up. So we're keeping the block and we're going to cut a flat on this. Now usually I have a technique, I don't measure from the center up. I usually just take a little bit off, cut, flip it, cut, measure, and then I'll divide that distance in half and raise the table up and cut it and that's it. Well, I cut a little too much off, but luckily it'll still work. Here we're centering up to drill this hole. Now remember, you, you can take a reference right off the inside of the jaws and that's what I did here. Worked out really well. Going with the centering drill. Going with the drill bit. We're going to hand tap this. Now the purpose of the tap in the drill is to keep it square. Now I know I could power tap this, but boy guys, I've got a lot of work into this. I'd rather just take my time, do it by hand. That's it. The building of this part, like I said, I still have to harden this. And the reason you have to harden it is inside the quill, it's hardened. When you go in with a soft material like this, it will actually lock up. So you want to have two surfaces that are going to butt heads. If it's soft, the softer one kind of gall a little bit and lock up so you won't get it out. So this is going to have to still be hardened. But the idea of it is really strong. I really like the way this is turning out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, if I've earned it. Also check me out on Instagram, Facebook, give me a thumbs up. Also share the video and help this channel grow. All right guys, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. I love it in the comments when you tell me what part of the world you come from or what town you live in or what country or both. So please in your comments, tell me where you come from. I'd really like to hear from you.